Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. So, welcome to Indie Beacon Radio. Um, you have an interesting last name, so I'm not going to mask for it. The first name is Jeff. Yep. Um, you operate a program called Squirrel. So let's start with the basics. What is this program? Well, Squirrel is a startup we started because, because we believe that every book is, deserves to be discovered. Um, and we, are, we have a mission where we, we feel like we can um, map every setting from every book that was ever written. So how do you start that? Um, there, there's two ways to it. And, and one way is to go from the setting to the book. And the other way is from the book to the setting. Um, so we actually, let me stop you right there. Set, you're saying setting, so you mean location? Uh, location, like real world locations that are being talked about in a book. Uh, okay. For example, Sherlock Holmes, uh, Baker Street, um, Great Gatsby, the Plaza Hotel in New York. Um, and, and every book, pretty much every book has a location. And sometimes these locations are not real, but they might be inspired by other places that are real. Um, and we want to map all those things and use it as a way for people to discover these kind of books or these books um, and also have a really engaging experience at that point because you're just standing right in the middle of the story while you read the little excerpt that takes place right where you're standing so you're much more engaged and then you can flip through and buy the whole book um, it might also happen that there's books set in your own neighborhood um, i personally um, when i was 17 i went to California is an exchange student because I'm actually from Belgium. Um, so that was like an area in Northern California, Sonoma County is an area I'm very interested in, or San Francisco. So that going home back in the days, it would have been nice for me to have these kind of books that I could discover based on that location. And, and actually one of the books was the Linen the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. The last scene, uh, one of the last scenes is uh, on the Highway 101 going down uh, to San Francisco on a motorbike and for me that really clicked because I wrote that road a couple like a, a lot of times um, and that's that's actually one of the reasons I started this, this project okay. so this is good for any book your map is traditional published or self-published or, or whatever and the author if I understand correctly can go into your system and tag the location and write how it corresponds to their book Correct. So we have not we have an author tool uh, where you can create an author profile or multiple profiles. Uh, publishers can use that for different authors, but if you have different names you write under, you can can also do that. Then you can add your book, uh, give a little bit of information of that, and then also start adding these locations. And I have been asked before, can you do that? Uh, can you automate that? And maybe in the future we will, but we feel like it's an open canvas for authors. To, to start creating stuff from their books on those locations. Because, I mean, we prefer if you have an excerpt in there, because that's really where the engagement happens. But some authors start using it for other purposes. Um, you can do a little scavenger hunt in there, or you can um, have locations that were an inspiration for you, where you met someone that became a character in the book, where the author grew up, um, and, and, and that plays and that history inspired the author. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a manual thing. Um, and it's it's really for you to go in and add your own locations and, and create with your own voice and with the own with your with the things you feel like should be added on to it, a little bit of history, a little bit of background information. Um, if we automate that, I think we would lose a lot of that. Yeah. You mentioned something that I hadn't thought of before. Um, inspiration was the word you used. So for some people who may have a fantasy book for example okay and some of the locations really don't exist or anything but they visited some place um, it could be a woods a creek or whatever that inspired them to write either a location in their book or something so they could actually then tag that physical location to their book and still exactly yeah you can it's an open canvas you can do what you want with it um so places that inspire you but uh, we also found that people started um adding Poetry, for example, like some tree that inspired you to write that piece of poetry. Um, there's some children books in there too. So one of the authors, she added, um, I think it's um, a, 
park in Austin where these big, big flowers are with big leaves. And in her book, it doesn't, it's not set specifically there, but in her book, um, some elves live underneath those kind of leaves. So you're walking on that path and you see these leaves and you read that, oh, that's cute. And I can come here with my children and get the book. And then the next day, come here with my children and search for elves, right? It's, it's just connecting those two worlds, uh, the literary world and, and the real world. And I think that, that creates a lot of engagement for, for anyone. Yes, it does. Um, so let's go a little more detail there. Um, as of right now, as you stated, um, authors can go in and tag their locations and put the books in there and stuff like that. So how does a reader then find out about those things? Yeah. So we, we have two ways to do it. We have an, we have an app um, that you can download. The scroll, the scroll app is on the App Store uh, for um, iOS at the moment. Um, so you just walk around and then based on where you are, you would get a notification saying, hey, there's a book set right here that might interest you. Then you can open that notification and you can read about the part that's that's set there and whatever the author has added to that location. So that's that's one way to discover it. But now we're also going to launch uh, the opposite direction. So from book uh, to location. Um, and that's, that's very simple. A website where you as an author, the same locations you added to the app will pop up there based on your book. And so per book, you can download a link, you can copy a link um, that you can share on Instagram or Twitter, or wherever you want on your website. And it's, it becomes um, a companion to your book already, right? So it gives you extra content uh, for, for your readers. So they go to your website or see you on your Instagram and click on it, they come to our website and they can see the whole map um, of your book, of that specific book you shared. Um, so in that way, from, from their desk or from, from their couch, they can visit the locations from your book. And we also added uh, Street View, Google Street View. So, and that, that's a really cool experience. Like when we had the idea, we thought it would be really nice to have, but now we're actually implemented it and just playing around with it ourselves. It's an amazing experience. Because you just see a location, you read about it, you click true, and right there, you're at the castle or at the bar where the book is set. It's just such a nice experience. So we go, in both ways now, we go from location to book and from book to location. Okay, so from a marketing perspective for an author, okay, um, help me if, if I'm missing this or not, but let's say even in the process of writing the book, they've got a location, it's been there before, that's what inspired this writing of that chapter or whatever, or that scene, and they can actually, as they're writing the book, not even before it's published, but as they're writing their book, they could go in, tag it into your system, and use that as part of their social media tweets, posting, by sending out that link so people can then start getting physically involved in the book and that location. Exactly. And you can do that before you even wrote the book, uh, or when you're planning, and this is inspiring me for this, and I have a title in my mind or something. Uh, you can use it as, as a teaser right before the launch. So you don't give away too much then. <laughs> or you can have like a, like a first chapter, for example, that is set in a couple of places. Maybe share that with your, with your audience before they, they, the, the book is even published or launched. Um, so yeah, like I said before, it's an open canvas and we feel like people start using it in ways we didn't even expect. Um, and that's one of the things as a, as a nice teaser uh, your book is yet to be published. Okay. Um, you mentioned the mapping, okay? And, and I'm still trying to get my head around it because it's still new. Um, but you said you could lay out the map. So from what I've seen so far, it's been one location. But you're saying you can do multiple locations in one map? Help me understand yeah, that. Exactly, so if you go into the author tool, it's one location by location. But once you go to our, our maps website, scroll maps, you get to see the whole overview. Okay. So if you for the book or for, or for the whole book? For the okay. Book. So we decided to do it per book, uh, not per author, because we want to have the story um, in, in one map. So if you want to go for another book, it's another link you can you can click uh, or you can download as an author and share. Um, so yes, if you go if you come from the app, it's always one location you bump into. Right? Maybe in the future we can split ourselves up, but right now we can't. Um, but if you go from the link that you send to the Squirrel Maps website, um, so from, from book to, to location, 
uh, there you can see the whole overview of the whole story. And it's, it's very interesting sometimes, especially books that are set in different countries. Or for example, uh, Frankenstein. Uh, we have a whole map of Frankenstein. It's, just easy, uh, it's really easy and interesting to see that journey and the distances that that character uh, crosses. Okay. But, uh, so forgive me for sounding a little stupid here, but I wanna make sure I, I, I get this. Okay, so I'm gonna use one of my books as an example, okay? So it starts off here in Houston where you're based, okay? But it also then travels to New Orleans, to West Texas, to New York, to Paris. So throughout this journey of these characters going through these different places or the other multiple characters, that person who's viewing the map can watch or, or at least understand where the trips are going and see the full cycle of everything and, and all that, correct? Exactly. Yeah, and then the feeling you get then, I, I was just talking Frankenstein, just for myself having read Frankenstein and seeing that, uh, that map and seeing where the, those people have gone, it just becomes really real all of a sudden. It feels very real. It's a, it's a weird experience to have, but it's, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're going for, to just link those two worlds. Uh, but it can also be from a biography, like a, from a, a nonfiction book. But uh, yeah, it's a, just a very interesting uh, feeling. And people have that already uh, when they go places. Um, everyone has a book that they feel like, oh yeah, I do want to visit that place, or I've been there. And, and, and now you can also do that from yourself. And of course, we want people to go and explore the world. That's why we also have an app. But if you don't have time for that, or you know, you're just on a Friday night and you just read a nice book, you can go and, and, and experience that whole journey uh, just from, from your sofa. Now let's go back to the app for a second, the readers discovering the books, okay? Um, the way your system is set up, if the program is on, they've downloaded it to their phone, smartphone to be specific, and it's on their, you know, it's up and running, they could be walking somewhere and all of a sudden it will beep at them, it'll chime whatever they've said, saying, hey, a book has been written about this location, correct? Correct, yeah. And then it pops up, it shows the cover image, and it allows you to click on it to see a paragraph or, or whatever's exactly. written in there, yeah. um, so you can learn more about it. And then as you said earlier, you could actually click on a link and purchase either the ebook at that point. It's only ebook, you can't purchase a physical and have it shipped to you, it's just- Oh, you e can, no, no, it's you both, can't? it's both, it's both ebook. For us, that doesn't matter, you want you to experience the book. Right. So we just linked to Amazon or iBooks at the moment, um, and hopefully it's for more stores in the future. Um, and from there, you choose what you want. You want the hardcover, you want the ebook. It's up. It's up to you. Uh, and that's exactly how you said it. It's uh, a couple months ago. Uh, I was at the in Paris uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and all of a sudden, I got a pop up from a location from a book. And still for me, because I've experienced it a couple of times, but it's just really nice to get that. And you're right there, and then. Uh, and in this case, I downloaded the ebook because I was about to step on the plane. Uh, so I'm not sure if Amazon already does that, like one hour delivery, but maybe in the future. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's exactly the experience that I would describe. It. So who do you see as your regular reader using your app? What kind of, what's the details of who they are? Yeah. Well, we see, I mean, what we see with our brand is uh, it's, it's between 25 and 35 uh, mostly, and these are um, pretty the average reader, really. The, we, don't, we don't need the heavy reader who's obsessed by books, and I think that's important for us. Because um, the problem a lot of authors, and especially self-published authors have with the average reader, is they just get something from the top 10 bestsellers list. Um, and that's how, how they get their books. Um, and, then, and then, of course, someone who reads a lot might go a little bit deeper into things and discover other books. But we really want to level the playing field there for books so that you would make a decision as a person who reads five, six books a year instead of 50, 60. Um, how do people read 50, 60? I'm pretty sure. Right? Still are. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. But that maybe that's why I started because I'm a pretty average reader. I just read 12, 13 books a year. Um, but just create that relevance for people. So instead of going to the top 10 bestseller list, they just bumped them into a location and a place where they went on holiday um, or where they live. Um, so, so that's really what we're trying to do with this, just level, just level that playing field. And in the future, maybe we can, because um, we have all this data now, uh, for example, we can work with airlines. So at the moment you book a ticket to, let's say, Amsterdam, it will show up here, three books set in Amsterdam. 
that you can get now for 20% discount. Or a week after you're back from your from your holiday, here are three books that you might like, as we saw you just came to Amsterdam uh, a couple of weeks ago. So you might be relive that place through through stories. Now you've been around for six years? About five years, yeah. Five years. Okay. I remember meeting you way back when it was in the beta yep. aspect and stuff. And I have to, you know, for the viewers that I am one of your fans and promote you guys. Um, you've gone slowly building in small steps, basically. Yep. Um, what are the future plans that you have for the app? Yeah. So we started a couple of years ago, and I mean, we, we thought, okay, we'll just bring out an app and, you know, that's it. But in, in the meantime, we realized it's a lot bigger than that. Um, so for us, we're kind of looking now more into a way, I mean, it sounds ridiculous to say that, but it's more like, like Wikipedia, right? We feel like this is something that will exist at one point where every setting from every book has been mapped. Um, so it's, it's a lot bigger than what we thought it was in the beginning. And we're just a small team, so building this app was one thing, but it needs so much more uh, in my mind you know, than it already is. And it could be so much more than it already is. So now we also decided to take the other way around to go from, from book to location and create this map with all the data we already have. Because we feel that really creates uh, a lot of uh, relevance already for, for the authors and for the readers that they can use right away. Um, so yeah, we have this giant idea to map all these settings from all the books ever written. And that's a big concept, but every step we take, we base on that concept. What does it mean to do that? Um, and we felt now the next step would be to, to launch Squirrel Maps and to be able to share a link from your book's locations with your readers, but also with future readers. Um, at one time, you had talked about possibly getting it on trains or, and other visual aspects. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's, uh, I mean, that's a bit waiting for the hardware to be there. Um, so if we're talking about a train ride where you look through the window, and you can see all the places uh, from books that are set there. Um, that's that's very in interesting for a traveler, especially if we start talking about the Hyperloop, for example, the thing that Elon Musk is, is building. Well, not he's not building, but uh, he wants other people to build it. You won't have any windows anymore, so you probably have screens on there, so with like a fake view from the world. So that would be very easy to put our data on. So we're talking with different people, but we're, we're really waiting for the hardware. We're not a hardware company. Um, what we're building is that database uh, for, for other companies to build those kind of things. But it's a very interesting way, because if you're just looking into transportation, um, if you look into what's in, in um, if you ask question, questions to people, what will they do in a self-driving car? These are things for the future we need to think about. Uh, and so there's some emailing, there's eating. I think on a third or fourth place, it's reading. Now that's the first thing you, as a, you know, like a car manufacturer, can have can can give to your your people, right? right. Your, your users. So they should be thinking about stuff like that. How do we entertain people in cars? How do we inform people in self-driving cars? What are they going to do in self-driving cars? I think there's a great opportunity for authors to do that. And attached to that, there's the concept that a car brings you all these places where books can be set. So I think that's a, that's a really good match there for us, cars, planes, and any kind of transportation. Yeah, because um, back to the train, um, when we first talked about that, the immediate aspect I was looking at was being in Europe, because there's so many trains yeah. and, and people travel that. So as you're tra traveling through the countryside, you see a castle in the distance, all of a sudden it would pop up on the screen, a book was written about this castle, Frankenstein maybe, or, or whoever and stuff. So that would apply to cars and, and other things yeah. as well, which is really cool. Um, currently, how many books do you have on your system? Uh, there's about, uh, about 1,250 books. Like so you're way behind. <laughs> We're way behind. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a bit the thing. Um, we, we launched this app, and we, we feel like we can do something much faster with the website. There's an app building it. We thought in the beginning, it's going to be very simple. We create this app, but we felt it needs a lot more to be something that can facilitate that vision, right? 
So now we want to build this website, and that's just very easy access to people, very easy access to authors to share these things. So we want to create a loop where people share their books and have other, other authors coming in and, okay, now this is something I want to do for, for my readers too. Um, and then that way, I mean, we have a couple of great books in there already. Um, we're very, very proud of those books. There's some amazing stories. And whenever I look at the app or on the website, I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. All these locations, all these places. Because uh, we do have a couple of thousands of locations. So um, it's, it's a whole world that, that opens up that way. And I always think about it like you know, where we do, your whole world becomes a bookstore. Every place can be attached to a book. Uh, and a lot of places are. So that, that's, our, that's our mission and that's what we're working on. Now, from my organization's perspective, we have well over 300 members. I know it, through our bookstore and everything else, we have 3,000 titles that we're working with, with our authors and stuff. So that's a lot more than what you currently have, which yep. means the authors need to get off their ass and <laughs> get it on there. Yes. Um, and that's really the thing with the app. It's, it's an iOS app. So a lot of people don't even have the iOS, they have the Android or something. So this becomes a lot more accessible. And of course, authors, before they add something, they want to see how it works. Right. So I think that's been a little bit an issue for us, uh, for authors who were wanted to add books, but didn't see the results right away. Or people would open the app and they would have those books right away. But for an author uh, and for anyone, uh, if, you, if you want to put something in there, you want to see the results. Um, and some people have asked me, you know, why, why would you, you know, why don't you automate it again? Um, and, but in my mind, it stands right next to social media. So if you're on Facebook or Twitter, you have to work on it every day. In our app or in our, in our platform, you just have to add your book once at a couple of locations and your book does the touring for you. You don't need to, it's there and people can discover it. Um, and, and they're in a place where they're looking for books and looking for stories. So you're not in the whole, in their whole big Twitter list uh, where every second a new, a new tweet comes out. So we feel that's a very strong experience. Uh, and we, we want to put it, position it next to social media in that way. Okay. And, and from my perspective and, and what I've always told your know, authors, you know, it, it is a great marketing tool. It is doing the tour for you because like I said, I have a, a book that has Paris, New York, New Orleans, West Texas, Houston, all these other locations and stuff. So I don't have to be there. The book's there for me. It is. All it is is somebody's walking by a spot and boom, there it is. And they're very engaged at that point. They're right there. Uh, while still using their imagination. Yeah. And I think I've told you the story before, but um, back when we were thinking to add characters to the app, and we have a lot of ideas for the app, as I mentioned. <laughs> uh, but we only have a limited amount of people. Uh, we want to add characters so you'd be able to follow these characters through books. It doesn't matter in which book they are at that point. I could click on a character and we'd see all the places where this character has been. Um, so our designers came back with uh, an example for Sherlock Holmes, and they had the photos on these characters from, the, from one of the movies. And that's exactly what I didn't want. Because that's the part, that's the beauty about books, is the imagination. I want to be able to imagine these characters. I want to be able to imagine the scene but I'm getting the backdrop. And that's really inspiring. So just having that book and the backdrop together, the rest I can imagine. And I don't want to lose that. I mean, when was the last time you liked a movie better than a book? Right. Right. Yeah. And, and so that would be a really great tool for those that have series. Yep. Uh, because like you said, the characters go into multiple locations and, and throughout all these different books. So it connects all the books, it connects all these locations. That is definitely a great tool for those type of people. So, um, where do you see yourself in the next five years as far as the app goes? Well, I hope we're, we're going to attract a whole lot more authors to this. And I really feel that the map website is going to be really good for that. It creates value right away. Uh, and, and like I said, I mean, the, the past years we've been kind of thinking about ourselves in the way like if Wikipedia would do. Like this idea is bigger than us. This idea is idea big, is bigger than our company, than the people who work at it. Um, it's really about creating a, a map of a big part of our culture, uh, having all these books everywhere. Um, so that's what we're going to keep doing. Uh, we're, we're counting on authors to add their books. Uh, maybe there's some bigger publishers who are also interested. I mean, they're all interested. It's just 
after I was waiting a little bit. It's, it's see how it plays exactly. out. Exactly, see how it plays out. So that's also why we've always been focusing on independent authors because they're very excited and they're very motivated about their books, and we create we can create really good value there. I feel. Um, and with authors come more users, and it's it's kind of loop that we try to create there. But uh, I, th I think it's a very valuable kind of thing. Uh, so. Now, you know, referring to the authors, especially the indies, um, we've talked a lot about the mapping and all this other stuff, which sounds a little bit overwhelming, but on your website, any author, when they sign in, first off, it's free. Yep. Um, but secondly, you have videos on how to do it. And it's very simple videos so that they can watch exactly the process and stuff, correct? Yep. Correct, yeah, there's, there's a, a couple of videos there that you can follow. And of course, we always have to help you with anything. But I think one of the big steps we're going to take the next months, uh, so a year, is really um, creating a better experience at the author pool level. So it becomes more a better overview, uh, easier to add stuff. It is very simple right now. Uh, it's not that difficult uh, to do, but it's just creating a better overview for you as an author when you go in or you see all your books together, all your locations together, what is attached to what. So it's more of a design issue uh, than what it does. Because it is also already as simple as, as possible, right. uh, but ju just as a design issue, I think that's one of the, the goals we have for the next year. Make that a little bit uh, better for the eyes and, and, and easier to have an overview. Right. And do you still have your uh, character walking around at book festivals and stuff? Uh, uh, yeah, so we, we've chosen the past uh, year or two to just hunker down and just build what we're doing, uh, and then once we're done with that, once we feel like okay. Now this is running in, then we'll probably go to some other uh, festivals again. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're a really cool squirrel uh, mascots. That, uh, yeah. That's your, uh, uh, cool. Yeah, they're a big success uh, in, in Austin. So <laughs> probably be back, be back with them one day. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I think that covers everything. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. No. <laughs> yeah, right. no, and of so. course, the authors can always email you with questions yeah. and comments and stuff. So, right? Well, great. Well, thank you, Jeff, for being with us. I appreciate it. Um, if you would, please say your last name. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, my first name, too, right? Because it's pronounced a little bit. It's uh, Jeff Bumbertop. And I'm going to go leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs>